Race versus Bloody Face. Uh, both players looking to get this W. Race needs it pretty badly. He is currently at the bottom of the standings, and a loss here means that he is the sole owner of eighth place and a prime candidate for relegation, and that's uh, just such a shame. Race is one of the most decorated players in Hearthstone, but uh, certainly uh, one of the most, if not the most, decorated player from Latin America. Uh, he's got so many tournament wins uh, locally in Brazil and also in South America. Any kind of Copa America uh, tournaments, he's always there contending for the finals. He is one of the most consistent players from that region, and it would be such a shame to see him relegated. But uh, I know that he's not going to give up. He's going to keep fighting. Just kind of comes at the cost of one of these players in Division B. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you can see how decorated of a player he is just by all the trophies on his wall. Of course, many of those are from other things in uh, earlier in race's life, I'm yeah, sure. like but Taekwondo. Like Taekwondo or potentially football. But uh, you can see some Hearthstone-themed trophies in the back, uh, which have come from his, at this point, I would say many <laughs> Copa America wins. But... Um, let's get into it. Bloody Face also, I mean, if Race were to win this, Bloody Face is at 5-5, five and five, which, again, would put Race in, within a couple games of uh, pretty much the the playoff race. Right. 7-7 seven seven is still good enough. Yeah, because just saying is, is so far ahead of the pack that if the other players right below him start losing, all of a sudden everybody's equalized and it becomes like Division A. Um, inverse Division A. Yeah. Uh, so Bloody Face ended up protecting Priest. Race protected Warrior. So they're both going to queue their protected class in game number one. And uh, Druid Band on both sides. With uh, both of them being Malagos Druids. So neither of them want to play against that Malagos Druid. So uh, Bomb Warrior, like we talked about yesterday, they do have more consistent board presence earlier on in the game, especially you know on that turn three with uh, Clockwork Goblin, Augmented Alec. But they do have less removal. There's the double brawl, no Plague of Wrath and only one Warpath. This uh, place is no scary. Uh, weapons project to try and deal with the early minions. So they basically have to rely on just playing minions and fighting for the board in the early game because the bombs are pretty irrelevant in this matchup. You're not really pressuring the priest, and even if you get a lucky string of bomb draws in the mid game, it's oftentimes not enough to win you the game unless you are already super far ahead. I must choose. But hopefully the proactive minions can give him a better chance. The discovery, discover change, excuse me, has uh, come into play here. Race ha discovering another Zilliax. Still don't think it means anything because earlier on in the day, Dan and I were playing an 80 gold uh, match uh, before we came on broadcast today. And I got Frightened Flunky into Frightened Flunky into Frightened Flunky into our Megadillo. And the funny part about that is when I chose our Megadillo, I actually had Frightened Flunky as an option, so I could have kept the chain going. Yeah, it was absurd. I so lost. nothing's changed. I lost. Uh, not very surprising. Quest Mage versus Quest Warrior. I, I should have won, actually. I all in when I forgot about one card, the Armored Goon. <laughs> I all in with a one mana Antonite. My trap card! And I got six fireballs, and he gained 15 armor. Ooh. A trap card! Yeah, I lost. Ooh! Ooh! Yeah, it was. Ooh. It's a good pickup, but Bloody Face doesn't need it right now. He wants to play for the Temple of the Lord. He could have drawn two cards. You know, he could have drawn two cards in turn three. You're not challenged at all. Okay, he's setting up for his next turn. Uh, the Injured Blade Master. No wait, he can't play no, Injured Blade Master North Shark anymore. So let's break it down. If he played the North Shark there, he would have a cleric and. A the North, the the light one would be the exact same stat line. No, it would be higher because he would have healed one extra minions. It would be a five attack. Oh, okay, five attack. But he wouldn't have circle of healing for the injured blade master. He wouldn't have circle of healing for the injured blade master. That is true. Okay. So then this turn would have been awkward still. He would have had two more cards in hand. Mm. And a North Sharon Cleric on board. Is someone injured? You're right. If he's going to go for the play anyway.
And he would have also had a coin. If he's really evaluating if it's worth throwing in something else. The Pyromancer, perhaps? Not really. Two cards. Whiteface knows about the threat of Restless Mummy. But that's not going to save his board. Looks like he's resolved to just play and clean up here. Drawing a bunch of cards. Restless Mummy's going to be able to answer all this. And another nice saving grace here for Raze is that he's going to be able to stick a mech on the board. Yep. Stick a mech, but no, nothing else with like reasonable power. Um, so regardless, he would not be able to challenge High Priest Ahmet if it were to come down, uh, which is always what you're worried about uh, on four. You're worried about High Priest Ahmet and uh, the Psycho Palm. Psycho Palm wouldn't be that big of a deal because it would be a a Light Warden or a Northshire Cleric. Which he, could, he wouldn't no. have follow up on on those two things, so he could pro he could most likely pretty easily clean up the board. No tomb can hold me. No tomb can hold me. Yep, not exactly the ideal scenario. I must choose. But they really do be like that sometimes, TJ. You gotta just. Take what you can get. Remove those minions. Set up your best you can. And the high priest on that comes see down. A dark future. Now that being said, even cutting down a Met's health a little bit through Aziliax still helps. Still helps, yeah. Because then they force you force them to have the circle of healing or something else to buff it before they play any other minion. Because cutting it down to three life or lower makes Ender Blade Master and Ender Tolvier a liability. And I guess if he's going to go for that play, the question is, do you also trade in the Town Crier? I think the difference of three health and two health is not that large. Um, both of them would, would uh, not allow Injured Blade Master or Injured Blade here without healing first. Yeah. The three health versus two health doesn't seem that particularly important. It's maybe the heal or other buffs that you can do, like Beaming Sidekick, that you would consider. I think that being, things being a three health breakpoint lines up really nicely with Wrench Caliber and Ziliax. But at the end of the day, against Priest, one in doubt, just deal the damage. Yeah, re remove the, the health on the board. Yeah. So if you find yourself questioning it, it's usually safer as a general rule of thumb. Right. To just, to just deal the damage to the minion. Not to mention that uh, you also consider. challenge the 2-2 two -two with the 4-3. Bodyface has to beaming sidekick this or heal it. And Wrench Caliber is going to clean it up. Hey, I got you, friend. In the lights, Interesting man. enough, because Raze doesn't get any life gain from this, Light Ward doesn't get buffed. Ooh. Oh, important pickup here for Race. Yeah. And it's uh, kind of a testament to how Race now get on a PNC if you decide to build this bomb warrior. Um, they built it, obviously, with combo decks in mind, but they've tried to give it some game against Priest when necessary. Uh, that's why they have the double brawl in there. Job's done. Only one warpath. I think you're okay with cutting a warpath uh, over a brawl uh, because of the fact that it's better against Priest. Still a scary situation for Race, though, because while that brawl could be useful, if uh, Bloody Face were to all in on a single minion here, uh, brawl would be a pretty low chance, or I mean 50-50, in order to kind of clear it off. And that's the kind of the problem that Bloodyface is is up against here is. Well, Bloodyface could also just revive Ahmed. 
Could have revive Ahmet. There's only been Ahmet, Light Warden, Northshire Cleric that have died. Those are two outcomes that you're not nearly as happy about. Also makes Ooh. it a little bit weaker against Brawl. Yeah, the, the Northshire Cleric and the uh, other, like, you don't need Northshire Cleric to be revived because you already have one in hand. You don't really need the Light Warden revived because you have one on board. It's pretty much what? just Ahmet, which makes me lean towards Bloody Face playing the Inter Blade Master to improve Psycho Pump. Ooh. I mean, truth be told, Re just playing an Inter Blade Master is good still. Oh Ooh. my goodness. Wow, we. I mean, Brace does have the brawl, but he was hoping not to have. They didn't have to use it. Yeah. Honestly, I kind of want to be a little greedy with this brawl to buy myself some time. Bloodface has drawn some cards. I I know he's drawn some cards. There's a potential you die. The potential is real. I would agree if turn eight made more sense. Like let's say Restless Mummy was three or. Yeah, you, know, you had the ability to combo with Zilliax plus something else. Well, turn eight is your brawl. So in this case... Oh, you're saying to save it. Oh, okay, you're right. Yeah, you're right, in right. this case, turn eight is your brawl, and then turn nine is a Mega Devastator and Zilliax or Dr. Boom. Good outcome. Yep. Shoes. Bloody face baited out the brawl. Maybe, He's not out of the woods yet, though. Maybe an opportunity for him to move in here. Yeah. Doesn't have to worry about Plague of Wrath. Only has to worry about one more brawl, which race really hasn't drawn any cards outside of Town Criers. Um, so, 18 cards left in the deck. I must consider. It's just, how do you move in? Um, well, Northshire Cleric, you know Blade that Master heal. Restless Mummy exists, so you want to make Restless Mummy very awkward. If you play Northshire Cleric, heal the Injured Blade Is Master, and injured? maybe Psychic the Cleric, he's not going to be able to do all, th all of those things. Uh, did Race play the Zilliax that was drawn from that was in the game over here, or he played the Zilliax that was from the... Uh, I believe he played the game. natural Zilliax. Okay. So yeah, that beaming sidekick makes a lot of sense. On the Interplay Ooh. Master to protect it from... Sure. This is fun. Hey! I got you, friend. Divine Spear and Topsy Turvy. I mean, it's an opportunity for Race here to clear, but it takes almost everything that he has. Restless Mummy and Wrench Caliber? Yes. There's no minion on the board for Bloody Face to heal. What now? There's not much power. You are taking four, so you're going on to 17. You do have reasonable follow-up. If you can buy yourself one turn, you can Dr. Boom Mad Genius and then follow that up with Omega Devastator Zilliax. <sighs> Another play he could take is to cut off the card draw immediately and go for Zilliax and Acolyte of Pain. Try and bank some card draw, get closer to the brawl, hold on to Restless Mummy to be able to try and clear off his injured Blade Master next turn. But he's been seeing the, the far left two cards be held for several turns now. The Acolyte and Pyromancer has been there for so long. Yeah. So I think Race is like, if that's Divine Spirit or Fire. Oh, he is doing it. Okay, he's gonna he's gonna hedge. I okay, like all right. I like this a lot, actually. You already saw a circle of healing. You saw two beaming sidekicks. Even if this injured Blade Master is just healed, he can kill it off with Zilliax next turn. Oh, how much damage is this? Uh, so four goes to six, six goes to eight, eight goes to 16. That's enough. Yeah, because he has the four damage from the injured Blade Master. It's 21. That's a game victory here for Bloodyface, if our calculations are correct. Yeah, he goes more arms, uh, Divine Spirit up to 16, Topsy Turvy, it's 21 damage. 
Grace is unhappy to say the least. He needed Warrior to beat the Priest. He brought the Bomb Warrior instead. And that's a game one victory for Bloodyface. Bloodyface with this win. Only has to get one more and he's back in the playoff race. Yep. And you can kind of see just how more, m how much more difficult it is to uh, beat the Priest as the Bomb Warrior. Um, because, you know, just look at the, the, the cards in hand. He just has a bunch of minions that he just have to keep playing and weapons that he has to keep playing to keep the board in check. And eventually, the Priest can just snowball. He even had a brawl. He had a brawl pretty much on time and uh, was still not able to overcome the pressure. So, um, got to feel rough. Because that it seems like that bomb war is a good read with the metagame. Like it's good against two of Bloody Face's decks, and even then can still have game against Priest, and you get the matchup that you're not that okay with, and then you lose in like with slim margins like that. That that one has got to feel pretty brutal, especially with the two and seven uh, record for race right now. All right, well we're gonna take a break, and when we come back, uh, we might see the beginning of the end of Race's career in Hearthstone Grand Masters, but he'll try to turn it around. Stay tuned. Legends say powerful treasures are hidden everywhere here in Aldoom. If we hope to defeat Rafam, we'll need as many as we can get. He's already unleashed the ancient plague lords and countless monsters. Keep them distracted, Reno. Not a problem. This plan is totally gonna work. Make that right, Finley. Oh, yes. I have them right where I want them. <laughs> there is an artifact here. The name is... The Scales of Justice. Oh, it must be really fancy. <laughs> Only to be used in a time of great peril. <laughs> yes, I think this qualifies. Hey, look, Finley. You've lured one of the Plague Lords. Take this, fiend. Ah. In the face. Yeah. Hey, guys, get that treasure. We've got a Plague Lord to destroy! Stop! Yes, please hurry! Not to worry, Finley! we just push this thing right here. No! That's a trap! Watch out! It's all good. I am finally tied up. Gracious me! <laughs> what we actually need to do is press this. And there. the tall, ruggedly handsome guy again. My name is Brian Eason, also known as Bloody Face. When I first started playing Hearthstone, the first deck that I crafted was Miracle Rogue, and it was pretty much the only deck I played. I love combo style decks. I don't like really being aggressive per se, but I like having a deck that has a very aggressive finish. I think my X Factor, maybe my defining characteristic, is that I think about everything. I mean, you could say that's like a characteristic of overthinking, but I think it's important to overthink because you're playing against like the best minds. And it's important to be understanding that everyone else is also capable of doing that. So you need to be able to outthink everybody. From a competitive standpoint, I want to improve as a player. Against Hunter Ace, I think I made a pretty big mistake. I really care about just making sure that whenever I play Hearthstone, it's my best Hearthstone. Initially, when I found out about Grandmasters, I kind of felt like, it, you know, it was just like kind of another league. But it wasn't until I was actually standing next to the other Grandmasters at Worlds that it made me feel like kind of emotional. We just had such a high concentration of like pure talent to actually hit that level and, you know, rub shoulders alongside them. It means a lot to me. Playing at the highest level is super interesting because people do unpredictable things. So I look forward to the mind games.
Fly Face currently up 1-0 over Race, and uh, things are looking pretty bad here as uh, Race being down a game going into uh, week six is going to be very difficult because uh, he has to get that win. Otherwise, he is in the sole possessor of eighth place, which means he gets relegated from Grandmasters. And it's a tough thing to swallow. I think most players are even commenting about it right now. Bloody Face actually posted a twit longer about what it means to be relegated, which is uh, the pain of having to start at square one and re-grind your way through the system if you want to make it back. And it's a, it's a tough proposition. Nobody wants to be in that spot. I do find it a little bit uh, <clears throat> entertaining to watch, of course, because it's like there's a lot of drama on the line. But uh, you know, a lot of these guys are our friends. Yeah, they it's are. Tough. And uh, you know, on the other side of that coin, though, there's thousands of players who are itching to get into Grandmasters. Who should be in Grandmasters. Yeah, who should be in Grand Like, Masters. theoretically, like, in terms yeah. of their skill and their abilities and maybe even their popularity level, there's a lot of players that you could justify putting in. There, there was a lot of players that you could have justified putting in at the very beginning, right? Um, there's uh, always a player snuffed, no matter what what happens when you create an exclusive list yeah. of players, of, of elite players. Yeah. Right? Every year of every sport of an all-star team and, and or all-league all team for awards. All-league team. In, in every system we've had, always there's always been a player that's been excluded too, right? There's the, always the infamous ninth place player in playoffs. <laughs> sure, yeah, killing that, all the yeah, uh, or Oskaka. Or uh, Oskaka. He was like a constant bubble player, yeah. and then finally was able to make a good run when it mattered the most. <laughs> yeah, and that, you now that's it's kind of the, the nature of it is. There's always going to be yeah. one player right on the outside, and uh, with the, the relegation system, that one player has a chance to get in. And, themselves so yeah uh bloody face was a player that was some similar position to back in 2015 he was in the america's playoffs where i think he was one or two rounds away from joining us in the bay area for the america's finals that was the finals that uh eventually purple went on to win and uh fall from 2015 along with uh, some of our other favorite players like trump sc and VLPS, if you remember. <laughs> VLPS. I believe the fourth player was Nias. Nias. If I remember correctly. Yep. Those were the four players from America's. Yep, I do remember. Good times. Oh. Speaking of good times, can you remember Snip Snap onto the Eternium Rover play in the summer of 2019? It was a very popular play. I remember it all too well. With Warrior at its peak. So this is the matchup that Race wanted with the Warrior. Um, you know, obviously we saw Nagidon, who didn't even have the best of starts, to be frank, in the match against Muzzy. No, it was a quite bad start. Quite and a bad still start. still got there. Still got there at the end because the bombs just put on so much pressure late in the game. And uh, I would say that Race's hand is much better. And also, Bloody Face, his hand is not that good. Uh, he does have some card draw in the form of Flash of Light and Prismatic Lens, but Consecration, not a card without follow-up. Uh, that's great uh, within this matchup because there's not much that's at that two health range. And double timeout in the opening hand is not what you want. Neither is Baleful Banker. Subdue can buy him some time, but I think this is about as uh, low pressure as you can expect a Prismatic Lens turn. Ooh, more card draw. Ooh, be scary. <laughs> Another beautiful bank. <laughs> it ain't getting any better, Dan. Precision. Base setting up for the Blastmaster Boom. I mean, this is just traditional warrior pressure. Never mind drawing the bombs. Yeah. You might just die on board. Yeah. Buddy Face does have the uh, subdue for this, but then his counter to Blastmaster Boom uh, is Consecration plus Timeout, which will negate the bomb damage, but at the same time, we'll just leave the seven attack immediately on the board. Shrink Ray. If you're Ray, you kill off this Kangor, right? And then you go. Kill off the Kangor, Blastmaster, boom. Though there is some merit into having. No, there's not. I was going to say better timing on Blastmaster, boom, but there's no better timing than turn six. Yeah, turn six is the optimal turn. You get two bombs shuffled in, so you miss out on a boom bot, but not a big deal. Yep. <laughs> Let's 
This is the first time I've seen Blastmaster Boom played in a hot minute. Yep. And uh, almost nostalgic. Almost, Dan. <laughs> almost. Not quite though. No card draw source, but uh, Bloody Face could time out in Consecration and take all the Boom Bot damage. Yeah, he could also wild pyromancer Let consecration, but then he also has to worry about the seven damage. The timeout has the added benefit of blocking the Blastmaster boom attack for the next turn. Uh, so if you consider the average boom bot to deal 2.5 damage, that's 17, 19 if you count the two uh, uh, snip snap, the microbots, damage that he would block mm. uh, from this timeout, which seems pretty good, quite appealing. I do. I think Pyromancer and Thanos in time has some the case because you can draw a card and you might need to draw something like Shrink Ray or some other way to deal with the 7-7 because Consecration isn't really getting it done. Mm. Yeah, the nice thing is that Consecration, there's two of them and you have one Pyromancer. So if you pick up Shrink Ray, that is better. See how much these Boombots would have done. Watch it be ones across the board. Oh, wait, you don't even see it. Uh, they were all ones, that. yeah, all ones, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the worst boom bots I've ever seen. I don't know why I thought. Uh, oh, wow, race is so unlucky, dealing zero <laughs> each time. I know uh, that's I, way I, below I, average. I'm kind of curious why I thought that I would show you the boom bots. I just remembered. Because you're a stupid noob. Glass half full kind of guy, Dan. <laughs> Glass is half empty. Oh yeah, you're right. No, they're, they're your your glasses are entirely empty. <laughs> wow! How dare you? <laughs> Bone Wraith is a sticky minion. The way you can look at Reborn is like a death rattle. <laughs> Nothing drawn from the town crier gives uh, Bloody Face a little bit of information. The Wild Pyramids of Blood Mage and Consecration just a little bit out of range. And you don't want to time out again. I wonder. No, this, this looks like it might instead be... One of the things where you just accept the damage. You might Wild Pyromancer and... Prismatic Lens. Prismatic Lens instead, just draw cards. I probably would consider throwing in a Blood Mage Thanos as well. Or even a, maybe an Elven Archer to at least negate the uh, one damage. That's fair. Uh, is there any other alternative we can go for here? Prismatic Lens first. Maybe you pick up... Um, he doesn't have any other two two mana minions in his deck. Oh, oh no, he has Novice quickly. Engineer. <laughs> you can get Novice Engineer... And a quality, mm. and then Wild Pyromancer quality? But that's a very low odds, because you need to hit both those things. <laughs> Setting up for Wild Pyromancer next turn. Moments like these on ladder when my opponent whips out the rampage, Bloodsworn Mercenary. I'm like, what? <laughs> who does that? I look over at TJ. I'm like, TJ, who does that? And it's me playing against you. <laughs> Phase, I guess. Probably. You could shield slam this 1 1. I've seen both consecrations. I mean, this does seem like a fair. Oh, interesting. Okay. It does feel like a fairly obvious uh, setup for uh, Pyromancer when your opponent shoots a dad's with a one health minion. That's the only thing about that bone right trade is like I think Bloody Face was telegraphing that he was gonna go for a wild Pyromancer clear, so you can get that two damage in. And I wonder if that two damage is gonna be super uh, super painful. Hmm. Later on. Do you like to play the trade with is fire? because Is he anticipating like a hammer rat coming out too? Could be a possibility. Or two silver champion. Yeah. Two silver champion would have gone through the, the 
first half, and then he would have lost the second half of the Bone Wraith to the Elf, uh, elf Archer. Reporting for duty. 25 mana shrink ray. That's not really what you're looking for here. Honestly, I don't even want to play this augmented Alec. Just because he still has both Clockwork Goblins and a Wrench Caliber left. Yeah, the thing about Bomb Warrior has been that card draw is sort of a, a pain point. Yeah. Now Gidon, uh was able to acclimate a pain Warpath in the previous uh, series that we saw against Muzzy in order to kind of bridge the gap. Right. I think that was the key. That was the key. Where in this game, Race is just kind of beholden to the top of his deck. Needs some bombs because he needs some pressure. What uh, now? Even this turn. If you just play Restless Mummy, you're giving Bloody Face an entire turn of no pressure in order to kind of craft his game plan. He only has nine cards remaining, two of which are bombs. No tomb can hold me. Because of both French caliber swings that have not been drawn. He's holding. He wants more bombs. Bloody Face still has a two of left. Oh, his bombs. Ugh. Just got done saying that. I was like, wow, that's a lot of cards drawn and stole two of in his deck. He's playing against Bomb Warrior. That mm. makes sense. Well, it was funny because at the very beginning of the expansion, there were uh, predictions that Bomb Warrior would nullify every Highlander effect. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> and eventually, the best deck in the, in the format had to get nerfed twice. Mm. Conjure's Calling and Lewis Pocket Galaxy, which is a Highlander-based deck, a Reno deck. And Bomb Warrior was nowhere to be seen. Yep. So people tried playing Bomb Warrior. Bomb Warrior got pretty far in Seoul. Yeah. And Goho played Bomb Warrior. He was playing, yeah, he was playing uh, kind of a high. He speak to me. He only had, like, the, what, the three long cards. Reporting for duty. Okay. Shield block <laughs> replaces itself. Oh. Oh. Important one. Yeah. Uh, this three damage, by the way, is going upstairs for me. I, if I'm raised, I want to push damage. Your magic ASAP. shall not save Every you. single point of damage that I can possibly push, I'm pushing. Right. And that, that was the one thing about the trade, which is he plays around, you know, the bone wraith body being cleared off, but missing two damage could end up being a break point for bombs. It's this, a trade off that you make. This is so awkward. There's no cards that he can play. Well, yeah, keep in mind, too, that Raze is also approaching a life total that's kind of scary. Yeah. He's I at mean, 40 mm, life. 40 life. Which he means... finds Dr. Boom Mad Genius. Or does he play Dr. Boom Mad Genius? He does play Dr. Boom Mad Genius. So he finds that, gets above the 50 range. Now you have to Zephyrus. And if your opponent keeps you bombing keeps bombing you out, you don't have time to get the Tyrion swings. Yep. And he only has one timeout since he had to use the first for the Blastmaster Boom. And his Shrink Ray is 25 mana. I wonder if Bloodface is thinking about think. just playing Shrivala for tempo, right? Like, you play it, you heal it, you hope that the 7-5 can threaten. And do you, you play Holy Wrath here just for the upside, right? It's if you're playing the Shrivala, you might as well. Yes, yes you Holy Wrath. You have one and eight. Quickly. Hoping for the big noise, did not get the big noise. You want the big shake. That is a big fake. Oh, so Race has an opportunity oh here to gain a good amount of life. He could yeah. trade into Shervala. Double Warpath. Eternium Rover, uh, double Warpath armor up. Uh, that would gain six armor this turn. Um, what now? Bring like up it. to 42 life. With the Holy Wrath being used. With the Holy Wrath being used. That almost feels like the game has been determined at that point. Still, th some things can happen. Like, he still needs to find a way to deal with the Tyrion, right? Sure. He has no weapon removal in the deck. No weapons project, no Harrison Jones. Uh, and his, his cards are slim right now. They are slim. Has Omega Devastators uh, and Omega Devastator in the deck. Has two Clockwork Goblins, a Wrench Caliber, an Augmented Elec, Dr. Mad Genius, Archivist Lysiana, War Gear.
Funnily enough, Bloody Face wants to draw a bomb right now so he can actually play Zephyrus. Doesn't get it. What? You think you can take me? Do you like to play with fire? Reporting for duty. Race picks up Clockwork Goblin, another bomb that could be shuffled in alongside with the augmented Elec. Yeah, I mean. It's a lot of bombs. I was Four bombs is 20 damage. I'm still worried if I'm in Race's spot here, though. Yeah, but if he needs to get this minion damage to the face. Yes. And Race has no way to stop that outside of Brawl, and he kind of needs Brawl because right now he doesn't have an answer if Shrivala came down. I think Augmented Ella Clockwork Goblin fight for the board looks like the best case scenario. I yeah. Wonder. Also has the added benefit of shutting off Zephyrus for even longer. Somebody exactly. Order he, he held this elephant too, right? He held it for a while. Held it for a while. This is the time to use it. 48 life. Bloody Face has 40 damage to the, the Holy Wrath and the, the triple Tyrion swings with the Ashbringer. Now needs to find a way to bridge that last gap. Christology, I don't think, draws a single card. Uh, he's played both Novice Engineers, Crystal Smith Kangor, Acolyte of Pain, Blood Mage Thalnos, mm. and Elven Archer. Base. Quality. Post down a one card. And you're pretty sure it's Brawl at this point. Your opponent wants to get cards out of their hand, and yet they haven't been able to play a card. It's got to be the Brawl. Race currently has no way to kill the High Priest of Call and the Wild Pyramids, though, but I think you're worried about the All Kings Alright. Like. Okay. Oh. I mean, the Elysiana. So, what are, what are you really hoping for from the bombs in the Refuge deck? I guess the other Clockwork Goblin and Revenge Caliber. So, there's still a lot. There's still a lot, but can you pass a turn and do nothing? He also has Dr. Boom Mad Genius in the deck. Uh, so, race is 10 now? last cards uh, Dr. Boom Mad Genius, War Gear, Brawl, Omega Devastator, Wrench Caliber. Clockwork Goblin, Wrench Caliber. Acolyte of Pain. Elec. Elec. Warpath. Shield Slam. has one Warpath. And there's one more card. So there's a, quite a few good tools still left in there. The assembly. Mega, uh, mega assembly. assembly. Yeah. Reporting for duty. There it is. Uh, that's what the payoff is. Paid for. off. Uh. I mean, any you, you take anything right now. <laughs> There's, you, yeah, safeguard. This is not a time to be picky. Safeguard being having taunt is actually a very big deal. Yeah, I'm just playing all of this. I guess you can armor up. I don't think it really matters, actually. I think it does a little bit. All right, there's one. So two, one more bond being drawn means that it's an act. It's the uh, Zephyrus is active. No. It's a big deal. Not having Zephyrus active means they can't Tyrion. Yeah, he's got two bombs and a Holy Wrath left in his deck. So right now, he can't even Trevala. Let me think. Not that he'd be able to anyway, just because he needs the 25 damage and couldn't risk it not going off unless he was like losing the next turn. Hmm. So over the course of two turns, Bloodyface has a swing with the true server champion. He's going to use the timeout here. He's to gain that two life, also prevent that damage, get the damage in. He's only to be taken four. Mega Devastator. I mean, it's decent tempo tools. 
A shrink ray coming down for 25 is really hurting him because he can't uh, find a way to easily deal with big boards anymore. I wonder if Race is even going to play this Omega Devastator. I don't think you do because you have Tyrion that you need to worry about as well as Shrivala. And you need every bit of removal you can get because as long as you outlive, that's that's all that needs to happen. So then you play the Nightmare Malcolm. Nightmare Malcolm and just armor up. I like it. 47 life, which means Bloody Face needs to uh, piece together <laughs> 22 extra damage. Well, he needs to draw. T he needs to draw a bomb right now. He needs to draw a bomb right now because he needs to get Tyrion on the board right now. Okay, so there's a bomb drawn. I'm almost out of cards. Okay, there's all of his cards drawn. I'm out of cards. Holy Wrath is last. Well, this is the last opportunity to push damage with Truce Over Champion, because you can Shrivala, do the Holy Wrath combo now, play the other Shrivala, and then get Truce Over Champion and push another one to face with the uh, Silverhand Recruit, and then next turn roll into Zephyrus plus Tyrion. So you Let force out a Brawl if your opponent has one, and then if they Brawl, you it's Tyrion, time. hope it sticks long Let's enough. Go. For you to be able to win the game. Do you trade the 1-1 one, one in to, for your chances for Shrivala to survive the ball? I'm out of cards. That's a tough question to ask, Dan. 7-5 goes I think I am. I think I am. Yeah, Shrivala is going to these minions. 1-1 one, one goes into the Galvanizer. It actually is a much higher chance that your Shrivala is win the brawl. Uh, just I because you're trading off two more minutes. It has to go in the 1-1. One, one. And then no Zephyrus played because you want high likelihood for your balls to win. Brawl and hope the Divine Shield one does not win. Chances are... Shrivala this this has been such shield. a rough season for race. Okay. <laughs> you start to get that 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 a weird feeling, feeling in your gut, yeah. you know? Yeah, Bladefist was hoping for an outer, but uh, he had to get more fortunate than unfortunate. Yeah. So race has this down. Uh, you know, this is a, a solvable game state from him uh, as far as, like, what, what his opponent no. can do. Uh, he knows that Zephyr's Tyrion is coming down, which means that I like to hold the Omega Devastator. Next turn, you brawl again, and then you hope the Tyrion doesn't live again, and then you Omega Devastator afterwards. Put your is there ever a scenario you pick the bright wing? Probably. Tyrion survives, but starting to realize that races could be in trouble. It's not the worst thing in the world, because next turn he armor up. He would take five anyway this turn. Next turn he armor up, shield slam, Omega Devastator. Yeah, so he's got to take the six, armor up, shield slam, Omega Devastator. So okay. he goes down to 14. Then next turn he armor up, shield slam, Omega Devastators. Uh, goes down to to ten because the hero power kills him. Oh, sorry, the hero power deals damage. And then he, and then, but he also has an Omega Devastator on board, which means that he's also racing back to fatigue. Got it. Or are you Omega Devastator now? I must choose. Is it better to shield slam now too, so you can get the mana out of the way in case you need to pick up anything else? Yeah, it is. I think. For duty. The one mana might actually make it, or the three mana might be a difference. It is not the difference. That is a big pickup for race. He didn't have that many cards left in his deck. Yeah. So that's one of them. Yep. And I don't think Bloody Face has time. There's going to be a bomb, which is an extra five. These minions, if he doesn't deal with them, it's an extra seven. I'm out of cards. This plus the three fatigue. Imagine if Shrink Ray was was playable. Yeah. Reporting for duty. There Dr. it is. Dr. Boom, <laughs> mad genius. 
<laughs> right off time. <laughs> Locks him out. <laughs> I mean, if anything, Ray's can just play complete defense here, and he has a hundred percent win anyways. <laughs> That's gonna do it. Wow. Race ties up the series one game apiece. Bomb Warrior again coming up big versus OTK Paladin. You can start to see a theme here, which is uh, the targeting of Paladin of players who are being too predictable and weak. Number one, it was about the mages. Week number two was about the druids. Week number three was about the priest. And week number four was about the paladins. And now we've come to the point where warriors are stepping in to try to kill the paladins because they're becoming too popular. Yeah, I mean, I'm curious to Very see interesting. what happens next week since this week was pretty much the week of all of the above, right? It, we had, this week is the week of Malagos Druid. Yeah, but, you know, it's still the week of Priest. <laughs> Very much the week of Priest. It's Priest and Druid. Priest and Druid, and there's a lot of uh, the Paladin as well. Um, so uh, I, I'm next week, maybe see some shakeup, some anti-combo, but that was a pretty cool game. I think, like, the, the, the point of the game where Race gave himself an edge was holding on to the Augmented Elec. Because if he didn't doesn't hold on to the augmented elec, he doesn't get rewarded with the clockwork goblin draw, and then races Zephyrus is active or uh, bloody faces Zephyrus is active like earlier six turns earlier, which means he gets tearing on the board earlier, which means his damage lines up better and race doesn't have time to find the removal. That's a good uh, point. So. I think that augmented elec hold was super clutch. Oh no, TJ. Oh jeez. <laughs> Mech Palin. This again. Mech Palin has yet to get a win this week. They got one win last week, at least in Americas. Strife Girl picked up a eight-game win in his one match win last week. So there's that. All right, well, we're going to Mech Paladin. And now, now get on keep saying that this is favored for the Mech Paladin. Well, I think the key might actually be the card in the far left. I think we keep Blessing of Wisdom. Yep. I also sort of... Like, Galvanizer's a lot worse when you're not keeping mechs. I think you... I think I want to toss Galvanizer. I, actually, I think I want to toss everything, because I want Christology. <laughs> I want Christology, but if I keep Blessing of Wisdom, that makes one drop insane. That does make one drop insane. <laughs> They're not going to do anything on one. So if you get a Glotron Blessing of Wisdom... What does Blayface keep? Subdue is definitely a good one. High Priest. <laughs> Oof, that's a much uglier hand than race. Oof. Oh, done. oh, that one hurts. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, much better. Especially if he picks Big up Galvanizer. Draw. Skater Bot, Glotron. See, now I argue that if you kept the uh, the Blessing of Wisdom, this Glotron pick up. The Crystallogy even becomes much better, too. Pick up Blessing of Wisdom. Theoretically, play. Glotron is, is, the Crystallogy is one card deeper Let in the deck. Let me think. Um, I mean, potentially. I must move quickly. Converting stored energy. Oh, Firebat played this matchup for tempo and tempo only. Only worried about card draw right. much later on into the game. So that, that was the thing. Like, last time we saw Firebat play this matchup, he coined out the Pyromancer. He did. And Blayface did not. I wonder. Already a different theoretical approach to the matchup. Uh, where, honestly, Fireback kind of played it like he was playing against Priest. Where he just spent all of his cards to remove every single minion he could on board. And then worried about drawing cards Quickly. later. Let the pain speak to me. Ouch. Yep. So, um, this deck tops out at five outside of Kangor's Endless Army. Five is the most expensive minion in the deck. Mm. And he's drawn four out of seven. 
of his five drops. Just missing a couple war gears and another glowstone. Well, the good news Let is that your opponent used a coin, think. so they can't really punish uh, a 2 4 very much. <sighs> I hate staring at an acolyte of pain that I know is going to draw two cards. Think. Can't do much about it. Just push damage. It's my yeah, least favorite, point favorite point thing point in Hearthstone. Point. What about an acolyte that draws three cards? Two cards is even worse because I know it was that much closer to making a draw one. I what about four like cards? Invention. Well, then I'm playing against Priest and I would have lost anyway. It's not true. You can actually overkill an acolyte. Like Defio, for example, used to overdraw an acolyte. Didn't it? I don't think so. Can you do it? But Acolytes can go to negative one and draw a card, even though they go to zero. Let me think. This uh, Anoya module pickup, by the way. Is it low-key huge? It is, but maybe not for the reasons that we might think. It might be important because Rays can bump it to the one-two and then attach it so that it's resilient against both True Silver Champion and even, to a certain extent, uh, Subdue. Yeah, Subdue would still leave the mech on board. Dan, I know that if there's anyone in my life that I could trust to <laughs> tell me when to be greedy with Glowstone Technician, it's you. <laughs> is that ever on your mind? I don't think this is a Glowstone Technician, like, greed game. And it says that I don't think you hold the 2-4. Uh, the I think the game's too far gone at that point because you're giving them too much card draw to have the right removal tools. The only reason why I don't like this is because of the possibility of subdue. Um, but uh, race pushing face damage, it makes sense given that uh, he's trying to just pressure his life total. But the subdue is going to be extra brutal in this spot. <laughs> in fact, I'm tempted to also throw in the Pyromancer here. Do you like to play with fire? Oh, okay. getting uh, even greedier with the subdue. And I get that. That does also make sense because he does have uh, the ability to shrink it, and there's not much that can be done outside of the war gear right now. Or is there? Oh. I wonder if this is an indirect punish. I don't think it is because he's still threatening shrink ray. Still threatening shrink ray. Okay. I don't think this is a minion that you want to faceless. I think that the Mechano eggs are what you want to faceless. This seems Let like a glowstone opportunity think. to me. Yes. Uh, it makes the Mechano eggs threatening on their own. But it only buffs three minions. I'll tell you what, though, Dan. Mech Paladin is a pretty difficult deck mm. because it... it Every, your game plan changes in every matchup. Every matchup is different. Some decks will operate their game plan, uh, operate the same game plan in across multiple different matchups. Move quickly. Some individual hmm. decisions change, but the macro game plan stays the same. In this one, it doesn't. The reason why I like the Glowstone Technician is because just you actually do increase the power on the board, which is important. Mechano Egg does nothing, and then you're kind of forcing your opponent to start using removal, and then Mechano Egg becomes pretty strong because it starts to hit back, mm -hmm. and they have to deal with both. Um, the, one of the worst situations is when you play Mechano Egg and your opponent just starts ignoring it and doing Let other stuff. Think. So making converting Mechano Egg into a miniature threat I is hope important. You like my invention. Too oh. much card draw. Yeah. Do you have to dump Zephyrus here? What's the card to the far left? Consecration. Looks like a consecration. This looks like a dump Zephyrus.
Hmm. You could also, uh, well, Christology actually draws oh, two oh, cards. I was thinking you could do that and then dr uh, dump the Alvin Archer. Yeah, no, or that's possible. Or Crystal Smith King. Or you're going to burn one of those. I think they're less important. Yeah, they are. I think they are. Hmm. No, that makes more sense. Yeah, I think Cypress is much higher of a priority. My hand is too yeah, full. This is not as much. It's good knowledge of his deck, being yeah. able to weave in and out. You can tell Race is hyper focused. He does not want to lose. Three and seven looks a lot better than two and eight right now. I'll tell you that. Three and seven ties P and C for last. Two and eight means that he I has to. Uh, I mean, he has to make up a game difference, and a game difference with four games left is very hard. Dare I say, nigh impossible. It's. It's not impossible. It's just unlikely. No, Dan, not mm. impossible. Nigh impossible. What's starting to feel nigh impossible is race drawing any other cost card in his Then deck. five. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, look, how fitting. The Mechano eggs a 2 7. Just like race. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And it's not too soon because this is the only day that he'll be 2 and 7. Yeah. We have our vengeance. Timing of phases manipulator is crucial. Uh, this Christology draw is actually potentially really big. So now what starts to become the threat with Christology is your opponent can slap two minions and face his manipulator, and that's when you start to get into trouble because Subdue doesn't deal with both of them. Yep. This looks like, to me, another Mechano Egg. I wonder. And you slowly but surely set it up so that you can crack the eggs and make an omelet. There's free breakfast today at my apartments, catered by Whole Foods. The Whole Foods showed up at, a, uh, at my apartment complex and just gave us free all-you-can-eat breakfast buffet with fruit, omelets, waffles. I should have just put you guys in a terrible hotel. <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? And it was that it said uh, only open from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. And I said, you know what? Stored energy. Bunny hopper, Fino, you know, just play a couple of warrior mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> they did go late today. I did go a lot late today. I rushed my breakfast because I thought I wouldn't be able to get here in time. Joke's on them, though. I shop at Whole Foods every day regardless, <laughs> so I was already an existing customer, which is uh, very mm. humorous to me because most people say, why don't you advertise to your target audience? Like, you mean the people that's already spending money and going to shop there anyways? <laughs> Bunnyface picked up the Wild Pyromancer. So he does have uh, an opportunity to clear the board in the future turns, but there's introduces a, a little bit of a logistical roadblock. The Mechano Eggs, it's a reasonable amount of power on board. I don't think you want to accept five per turn for the rest of the game. But you have to whittle down these eggs first. They, they, those are some tough shells. Those are some artificially created literally powered by the 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 element of the nether realm the nether storm what isn't that kind of what the mechano eggs are from the boomsday projects and nether the nether storm i mean dr boom himself is from nether storm yeah mm. but i don't know if there this is in some laboratory i don't know the color scheme doesn't match dan that's all i'm saying uh right because the light nether is storm, supposed to be purple for nether storm, storm is a is a purple this was infused lighting. with the power of christology yeah they definitely wouldn't sell those eggs at whole foods You never know. Those aren't locally Let raised. You never know. They got some weird stuff there. Those Robosaurs weren't fair waged. 
I kind of like the. I kind of like the the Bronx Yankee your face manipulator on one of the. Quickly. Yep. Yeah. Oh, the more powerful one makes the most sense to me. Yes. And this starts to make it really awkward for uh, Bloody Face because, again, Shrink Ray is only a band aid solution. If they leave the eggs up, you keep magnetizing on, you're eventually going to have to remove them anyway. Job done. This is what Nagadan was describing. Yep. The eggs. For those of you who have played Quest Paladin, you have experienced exactly this conundrum. Now, Bloody Face is approaching the point where uh, he is almost at combo territory. He's got eight cards left in his deck. Still two, mi two timeouts left. Uh, there's, there's ten power represented on board, so it's not the worst thing, but the Let threat of magnetize is there, and that ten could turn into, you know, 15 with a war gear. It could... Turn to even more if race has been holding on to things that were buffed by Glowstone Technician, something yeah. cheap that was held, buffed by Glowstone Technician. I we know that it's the Zilliax, but I think Bloody Face should consider making Shivala cheaper oh, now, wonder. and I think he should consider throwing in a Holy Wrath here. Oh, if you do that though, and Zilliax comes oh, out, move quickly. <sighs> you're right. You're right. You're right. So then you could Holy Wrath the time. <laughs> Okay. Boy, does that not feel good. But you can... Okay, another alternative is the Shrink Ray. I wonder. Six mana floated. So... Bloody Face wants race two Zilliacs in this spot. Ray shouldn't give it to him so easily. Yeah. Let me I, think. Kind of just like a war gear here. You want to set up a two turn lethal. If you push with the seven on board plus the war gear, it's 12. That's, that's half of 24. Looks like a two turn lethal to me. Well, that's a lot more to magnetize on if Bloody Face finds a way. And if he kills the board, cool. He got 388 Robosaurs. Yeah, if you if he kills the board, mm. you very much are okay. I'd also work here the one one on the far left because you know that he wants to clear off the eggs first. So what looks like to me is happening is Bloodface is setting up oh, the previous turn a wire pyromancer uh, opportunity to clear both things, and then t or at least maybe to clear off the first wave and then time out, and then wire pyromancer to clear the rest. Denied. The idea is to potentially Shrink Ray after he magnetizes. So he Shrink Rays here. Nothing else happens. The next turn he Wild Pyromancer cracks it open, timeout, and then clears it the following turn after that. That looks like to me, or some sequence thereof, but the idea that that's what it looked like to me by him not spending the Shrink Ray in the previous turn. And by doing that over the course of three turns, Blayface should make Shavala zero. Mm. He should have about two to three cards in his deck uh, on average. With that Crystallogy draw, maybe he has even less if he has anything else. Nope, I don't think he has anything else to draw. But, Dan, it looks like by not playing the War Gear, Race has recognized this and said, I'm going to hold on to my biggest, most think. expensive mechs until after you Shrink Ray and punishing you for trying to be safe by using Shrink Ray. Holy Wrath draws a Prismatic Lens. I must move quickly. Timeout has to start coming out here. I I would like to, to think that Christology mana investment matters, but it's also an activator for the Pyromancer. But that one mana might make all the difference. That one damage spell might make all the difference. But he drew nothing. Yeah, race here needs to just invest into the best post. Uh, timeout board possible. That could include three snip snaps. That could include playing Zilliax now. Or just drawing cards. I don't think you want to play Zilliax now because Shrink Ray is still there. I wonder. So call to adventure then? Call to adventure which uh, draws Galvanizer. Okay, here's another thought. What do you think about playing Galvanizer to reduce all the costs of these mechs so you can surprise Burst if he doesn't do anything? Yeah, uh, that sounds great to me. 
So, War Gear, Zilliac, Snip Snap, Annoya Module, Skater Bot. You can't I mean, play that's all 5, 10, 11. You can't play all of it. 13. If he galvanizes again. Uh, oh, if he galvanizes again. He yeah. goes 3, oh, 3, 1, 2. He, he can play it all next turn. So if Amex sticks, he wins, regardless of what happens in this game. Yes. Then B Bloody Face might go for a reporting for duty. <laughs> a percentage outer here. Yeah, I think he might be. Oh, he got another timeout. That's big. And Prismatic Lens to draw deeper in his deck. That's a big pickup. Also, don't forget, Zephyrus can get Master Spell. Can it? <laughs> if you ask Frozen, he'd probably be able to tell you at this point when exactly it will, because I'm sure that he went back and double checked everything. Another prismatic lens for three. That is huge, TJ. Is that guaranteed? What does he have left in his deck? He's got a wild pyramid. No, it's in hand. We're, we're, we're cross-referencing hmm. the deck tracker plus what's in his hand right now. Uh, He's used one Holy Wrath. Equality? Looks like a quality True Silver Champion. Equality True Silver Champion? I must move quickly. Your wish is Can he get Frostnova? No, Frostnova's bad because he has something to attack in with Zilliax. Wait a second. Two power stays on the board. Wait. Two power stays on the board. That's enough. A mech stays on the board. So, Diliax, War Gears, Skater Bot is plus 11. Plus, plus the Snip Snap. Plus Snip Snap? That's, that's 13. 13, 14, 15? Can he galvanize her and do it all? No, because that's oh, maximum wonder. amount of damage. He could still heal, though. He can heal all the way up. TJ, if he galvanized the previous turn. No, it would be the same. No, he would be able to snip that twice. It has echo. Oh yeah, if he had galvanized <laughs> the previous turn. I was I was trying to go for the oh, double gal. What, what if he What if he had glowstone technicians? That goes to that's that's not enough for sure. That's not enough. Almost actually. Wait, what if he galvanizers uh, with the glowstone technician? That's definitely not. He doesn't have enough board space. I must move quickly. I think you Zilliax now because you're never getting into healing ever again. I wonder. TJ, he's one damage off lethal. Unity, precision, the heal 27 is a big deal. And with Zephyrus used. Bloodyface is going to have to audible here. He could Wild Pyromancer, timeout. Quality Beam Burn was also a big deal. Wait, is it? I yes. I wonder. He could Wild Pyromancer, timeout, shrink ray. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The shrink ray here is really big, too. He still but, has shrink ray. But then how does he get the last points of damage? Do you like to play with fire? Uh, he might can, he might just be able to play Shrivala for tempo. I think his plan is shifting here. Okay. At eight eight. It's time. That eight doesn't come out. Is Playface gonna win this because he just has seven fives on the board and race? Gas and this army. Three max can come back. And he could skate or bot one of them to rush it into Shrivala. Zilliax! Oh, that is a big pickup here. Bloody face was hoping not to see the eggs. And it kept the magnetic. And guess what? They have their death rattles. I 
I mean, a galvanize. Basically, the oh, galvanizers wonder. were the only other things that could really come back. Race vested everything into the 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 eggs. It was a galvanizer, and there was that early glowtron. Those were the only things that I think could have came back. Yeah. Everything else, the bronze gatekeeper, the Anoya modules. They kept going on to the eggs. Quickly. Hmm. Or they got silenced altogether. Reporting for duty. Bloody face has no way to deal with this right now. I'm almost out of cards. Hammer of Wrath. Well, he does. Oh, he's two damage off. That's why it's a big deal. Two damage off. He healed from 27, TJ. He did. <laughs> this turn, Bloody Face was hoping to be able to Hammer of Wrath timeout, I not wonder. play a minion, and then next turn go for the kill. His setup seemed good. As long as he didn't die the turn he played Zephyrus, which it was close, and it was one Galvanizer play away from race to just losing, but he took the risk. Oftentimes you have to do that. I wonder if it still would have made a difference, too, if Bloody Face had the equality enhance of burning it to be able to get past his 14 taunt. Shavala, Baleful Banker. It's time to test your metal. Prismatic Lens? Oh, Prismatic Lens to draw the other Shavala. Then he can kill this the egg? He can kill it's the egg, but then he loses everything. And there's a Robosaur. Yeah, the rope that's what I'm saying, he loses everything. Because there's five power left over even after that, and then he just kills off the Shivala. Yeah. Wait, how much damage is this? Eight, ten, thirteen. He has True Server Champion Hammer of Wrath in his hand. Oh you're right. Oh, he can't get any more life. Wait, did Bloodyface win? He found an out still. Hmm. Because there's no taunts. Both bronze gatekeepers, bronze gatekeepers have been used, and Zilliax has also been used. There's not many cards left in the deck. Race is out of damage and, and doesn't have enough way to get uh, his, his taunts in the way. Hmm. He takes one fatigue, three, four, 12, 13. 18, 19. Bodyface just won. I'm not seeing any. Let's move quickly. I don't see it. Bodyface found a way to, to counter. No me way. Protocol. Race knows what's coming. There's a 100% chance that he's dead. It's only a formality. Reporting for duty. And Race is dealing with the fact that he is now going to take the defeat in this series. And he's going to a 2 and wow. 8 record. Bloody face, despite the odds, finds a way to get the win anyways at crunch time. That is clutch, TJ. Wow. That I'm, was a difficult I, series. I would say I'm speechless. I am speechless. that the overwhelming majority of players would not have found the same path to victory that he did, despite the fact that uh, there's a lot of, of twists and turns along the way. It was really impressive because that that last spot where I was like, how does he get the extra Shavala out? And it was the prismatic lens at three mana because I was thinking, oh, you can Heimer Wrath, but that was one mana short. From what he wanted to do. Yeah. Had he been able to stick the double Shrivala, I was thinking, well, does that mean that he runs out of damage because if you use a Hammer of Wrath? But he found a way to use Prismatic Lens at three when he was on fatigue, and that was the key. And uh, because of the Glowstone Tactician War Gear, I think that race could have put him to a situation where um, he was one damage off from the Hammer of Wrath forcing a fatigue tick and. Would it cause a draw? I think it would have caused a draw. <laughs> the hammer breath damage might have gone first. Right, that maybe, would be pretty. That would be pretty wild. Maybe it comes back to that galvanizer, Dan. 
I, I, I mean, the second galvanizer was kind of what I was thinking about, so we can power load all those damage. Power load them all at once. Yeah. Uh, if I mean, Race did that, he would have had to kill them. Yeah, result oriented thinking, he would have had, uh, what, 17 damage, one over. He also he lost got that the second galvanizer in the hand, too. He, he did. It's a sad, he did. It's a sad state of affairs. He did. Let's go ahead and uh, check in with Bloodyface, uh, who is waiting on the other line. Bloodyface, you're there. Yeah. Well done, hey. sir. Well done. Well done. Oh, very intense match. I think I threw the second one. I just shouldn't have played Shrivala, Banker. I just felt like, I, I don't know why I felt like I was under pressure. I think it was more mental pressure of just like the implications of this match because goal number one for me is not to get relegated and playing against Race, who's 2 7. I mean, I don't want him to get relegated either, but, you know, better him than me. So, you know, if I win this match, it's like almost mathematically impossible. And I think I was just really, it was like, this is one of the matches I think I was the most nervous for in a long time. For I sure. think it showed my play in game two. I just don't think I played game two very well. Well, you, you made up for it. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I could have. Uh, yeah. Dan and I didn't the, spot the, the, out, the very out last play. We were thinking about how to get the second Shrivala out, but the Hammer of Wrath was like, you know, fig, like kind of tripping us up there. But then, like, uh, you found a way to get the Prismatic Lens squeezed in there. You found a way to just, like, make everything just outside that range. And it was really, really well done on. Uh, on both ends, I do think that race had the opportunity to push a little bit extra damage because he was one off. He had that skater bot in the hand, and he had he played Galvanized the previous turn, he would have actually been able to kill you. It was yeah. pretty. It the, was pretty ridiculous. Was it the turn I master spelled? It was a turn you master spelled. Yeah. Yeah, I was so scared that turn. I was like, because at that point it is two, he only has two outs, which is either he just happens to have enough damage, or he gets Kangors two turns later, or like he has to have Zilliax and the Kangors. So I was just like. Please don't have that. Yeah. And he did have it. He had but. both. He had both. Well, <laughs> he, had both. he had both. He just held on to one of the galvanizers in his hand, which would have discounted all of all of his mechs enough to where he could unload two Everything. snip snaps yeah. in the turn that he played the the Zilliax War Gear uh, snip snap play. He would have had two snip snaps and be able to. He had 17. And you were at 16. So yeah. um, even on the last turn, I was really scared because he had a second faceless left, and right. if he faceless my Shrivala, I was. <laughs> Not getting uh, any more yeah, you're right. any more damage in. He didn't have any taunts left though, so that game was even more intense than I had originally thought. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Even on the last draw, that yeah. was a potential out there. Really back and forth. Uh, you kind of talked a little bit about relegation. You posted something on your Twitter earlier today about it. Uh, is that? I mean, the, people are talking about playoffs uh, for some, but it seems like relegation is the number one thing on your mind right now. Even though right now you're tied for second in the division. Well, I mean, I basically have two goals. One is to win world champs, and two is not to get relegated. As long as I'm not relegated and I'm still playing in GM, you know, I can still keep getting more and more shots at winning a world championship. But as soon as you get relegated, I mean, it's back to square one. Got to grind the Masters Tours, and I don't know if that's something I personally want to do. Um, so, you know, it's just a dream of mine to win worlds. And, uh, yeah, not getting relegated gives me more chances for that. So, yeah. Got it. Um you said that you feel like it's affecting your mindset. Is it, you said it's just this match, or do you feel like it's been affecting your play even in other matches as well leading up into this one? No, I think, like, I kind of got off to a good start. You know, I was 3-1, and one, and then I went 1-1-1-1, one, 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 so 5-3. So, you know, I was never really, like, feeling that bad. Um, I was mostly just focused on the games, focused on decision makings as you should be. But yeah, like I said, going into this, with race being 2-7, you know, if I can push them down to 2-8, it's just, like, I feel like I'm almost mathematically guaranteed because race would have to go four Oh, just to tie with me. And then he would probably have to beat uh, some of the lower people like PNC and Zelay. And then those guys would also have to like go three and one just to tie with me. Cause they're three, three, seven. So I just kind of felt like, you know, if I win this match, I am safe from relegation. I can just focus on playing my best. I feel a lot less anxious just playing for playoffs because, um, I don't, I don't know, like, I, I don't know. I just want to keep playing Hearthstone. That's like the the main number one goal. I want to stay in GM. So, yeah. Yeah, that's actually uh, entirely mathematically possible because PNC has to play race, uh, which would yeah, yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So that neither of them, they, both of them, can't get the win. So uh, that means you should be safe. Uh, of course, it's not a hundred percent guarantee, but yeah, we'll have I didn't to figure it do out. like I didn't do an exhaustive math problem. I'm not gonna do. It. I just <laughs> just by looking at it, I can. I'm like ninety nine percent sure. Got it. All right. Well, uh, take a break. Take a rest. Uh, well earned victory. Hard fought. Uh, you're six and three, and now even in contention to potentially challenge number one division the coming week. So congrats, and we'll see you back soon. Thank you.